Hi, and welcome to part two of my PowerShell tutorial series. Today we will be covering variables and data types. In the last video, we covered just some basic fundamentals of what the ISC was, what the prompt was, um, and just how to get some basic commandlets running. Uh, so let's open back up our ISC here and let's get started. So let's start off with variables. Variables in PowerShell are very similar to how variables worked back in middle school and high school algebra, where they hold a value. Now that value in PowerShell could be a number, it could be a character, it could be a series of characters, it can be an object. But they all start the same way. So we first declare a variable by doing a dollar sign in front of it. And then I usually use the notation, uh, camel notation, uh, which I start off with a capital letter of the first word and I capitalize every word in the variable. Uh, but every other character is lowercase. So let's take, for example, given name. So here we have given name and let's set that to my name here. We're just gonna set that to Richard here in double quotes. Now, what that lets us do is assign the variable to Richard, and then we can print it off and have it output Richard. Now, we could do a lot of things with strings. We're going to be covering a lot of different string operations, especially later on. Um, this video, we're going to be doing a lot of just basic operators on numbers. Um, and then some methods with strings that you can do. Um, so let's first off define a bunch of different variables here with numbers. So let's just assign free variables um, with all different values here. So we have value one, which is one, value two, which is three, value three, which is 10. It's a little bit confusing, so let's actually change value three, value two to value three for free, and value three, which is 10, to value 10, just so we have a little bit easier time understanding here. And let's do some basic math with these variables. So in PowerShell, just like every other programming language, you, we can do math. So if we do value one plus value three, we should get four. We get four here at the bottom when we run this. And we can actually store this very this result into a variable. So let's call this variable result equals value one plus value three. In this case, we don't get any output because we're storing the variable. We're storing the output as a variable, I should say. So now if we go ahead and look at what's inside result, we see that it is four. So it did in fact work. Now you're not limited to adding. We could also uh, multiply, divide, and mod. Um, I call it modular operator. Um, what that really is, it's the leftover of a division operation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our value 10 here, and we're going to modular to the value 3. So what this basically means is take 10 divided by three and give me whatever's left over. So we know that three goes into 10 three times, which is nine. So the difference between nine and 10 is one. So we should get one as an answer here. And we do. So all these different math um, Variables are very, very useful for different types of operations, some logic operations, some conditional statements uh, that we'll be doing later on. But let you know that you could do some math. Um, if you're a finance guy and you need to go through some Excel sheets or some CSV sheets, um, even though Excel does have a lot of that power built in, uh, you could use PowerShell to kind of integrate that put it into a database or create an HTML report based on that, or do some other things um, that you could automate through PowerShell that maybe you couldn't do through Excel. Now, there is a few things in 
PowerShell that make variables slightly tricky if you don't quite know what to expect. So let's create a variable called new variable. I can spell properly. And we are going to go ahead and not set it to anything. We're just going to run it. And we see that we don't get an error. Most programming languages, pretty sure all of them, other than PowerShell, I, I could be wrong, uh, would typically give you an error saying that there's nothing assigned. Now, PowerShell doesn't give you this error. It just reads it as a null variable, which we're going to be going over that in just a little bit. Um, but in PowerShell, if you don't set a variable, it gets defaulted to that null variable. Now, there is a way that you can set it to a more stricter what you would expect option, uh, which that is just the commandlet set strict mode and then version and then latest. If you run this commandlet, and then we try to run this new variable, we're gonna see that we get an error now, saying that the variable, new variable, cannot be retrieved because it has not been set. And now if we go new variable equals one, let's just delete this line here. Let's set that and then let's go ahead and let's try to retrieve it. We can see that we get the value of one. So I like to set strict mode on, especially if I'm working on some code and there's something that's just not working properly. I like to set it before that even happens. Um, but sometimes if you just forget to set the strict mode on and you're going through some loops and some code and eventually your end result is not what you were expecting, maybe there's a variable in there that's still null or doesn't have the value you would expect. So setting strict mode definitely helps uh, debugging your code eventually, uh, depending on how complex your code is going to be and what you're doing to it. I like to just show it this way you have it at your disposal. And if you turn it on and you find it annoying and you don't like it, to turn it off, you could simply do the set strict mode to off. And now if we do new variable two, which hasn't been set up yet, we see that it works. Um, so it just doesn't give us an error, which is what we would expect in regular PowerShell. So we are good to just keep going. Now there are a bunch of different data types, obviously, like you see that we can use in PowerShell. We have some numbers here, we have a name here, um, and we can even have some decimal values. And like I said earlier, uh, there's gonna be some different objects that we can manipulate like Active Directory objects, computer objects. Uh, there's a ton of different objects in PowerShell. Almost everything in PowerShell is an object. Um, I just don't wanna say everything because I believe that if you set something to an integer or a double, you don't really get that object out of it. It's pretty much just a value. Um, and we're gonna be seeing that in just a few moments. So if we wanna see what type of data our variable is, we can simply go look at our dollar sign given name and then we hit dot. Now, by putting in a dot, we're going to see tons of different methods and properties that are available for this object. And one of them is get type. I'm just going to hit tab here to auto complete. And then we are going to close off the parentheses and we are going to run this line. Now, here we can see that it is set to a string. So, a string is just basically a set of characters, a sentence, a name paragraph could be really almost anything. It could even be numbers as long as it's in double quotes or single quotes, it is a string. Um, and now if we do the same get type on our value three, let's say, we see here that 
it is an integer, a 32-bit integer. Now, a 32-bit integer could be positive or negative, but it will only be whole numbers. So 1, 2, 3, negative 5, 10, 1,000, but it will never be a decimal value. So it'll never be 1.2, 1.3, uh, 0 0.01. It doesn't handle those values. That is what's called a double. So a double would be if we set up a variable here called double value, and we're going to set that to 3.2, and then we're going to go ahead and do the get type on it. We see here that it is a double. Now this will be your 1.0, 1.01, 2.1, 2.6, 9.0, 1.111111 all the way to the end. Basically, almost any number you could really imagine, it'll be a double. Most cases, you will probably use doubles more than integers, uh, unless we're getting into conditional statements, uh, potentially. Even then, I think doubles are probably more so used. Um, on, like I said, you still could use integers. Um, if you have some basic uh, conditional statements or some logic statements. Now, what you could also do here, um, like I said, there was the empty variable, which if we go here and we do a get type, we can't really do a get type because there is no type. But what it is, is if we do a dollar sign C here, if I do a dollar sign null, it is already auto completed. This variable is built into PowerShell as an empty variable. So if I run it, it runs fine, it's empty, it's good. But we also have this the strict mode set to off. So let's set the strict mode back on here just to see and we can see here if we run new variable two, we get an error because it hasn't been set. But if we run null, we get no errors. This is because in PowerShell, null, dollar sign null is a built in variable representing empty. So we can always use this in our conditional statements or logic statements to basically check if something is equal to null. So if something is empty, then do this. Or if something is empty, then don't do this because if we have the strict mode turned on, we can check if it's null. And if it's null, then we don't want to do anything to it because we want to avoid errors. And then we could do something else to potentially set up that variable to then do something else later on. So let's just put this variable up here. And then what we're going to be doing is there's one other data type that I want to show, which is the Boolean uh, data type. There are other data types, but we're going to be covering those in a different video. But the Boolean data type is a true or false uh, data type. So let's see here. Let's create a value, a variable name um, called employed, and we're going to set that to true. So if we run this here, and then we go employed dot get type, and we run this here, we are going to see that it is a Boolean value. Now, Boolean, like I said, is only true or false. So again, very, very useful for uh, conditional statements or logic statements. And we can get to Boolean values by even doing uh, math operations. So if we have, I call it math operations, but really it's more of a conditional statement or logic statement, like I've been saying. Um, so if we do a value one or value three, and then we're going to do a dash eq for equals in PowerShell. We're going to be going over some of these other parameters uh, in another video as well. But we're going to be just comparing value 3 to value 10 and seeing if they're equal. We can see that this gives us false because 3 is not equal to 10. 
and we could get the type and we see that it is a Boolean value. So we can get Boolean values multiple different ways. So we can always check if something is true or false um, using these types of statements. Now that covers um, all the data types that I want to get into today. Um, there are other variable types uh, like arrays, array list, hash tables, and then every other object that you can really get out of commandlets. And that brings me to my next point here of being able to store your commandlet output into a variable as the last thing in this video. So yesterday we saw commandlets like get date, which gets us the date. So let's just run that commandlet again here. And we see here that it is Wednesday, April 21st, 2021 at 535. So here, if we do a variable called today and we do get date and we run this, we get no output because we store the output into our variable. And then if we reference our variable today, we get today's date. And then if we do a get type on this, you will see that it will be a date time um, variable or date time data type. So that is the data type that we get back from get date. Now there are a bunch of data types, like I said, the major ones that you're really going to be working with a lot of the times are going to be integers, strings, booleans, and then what I'm about to cover in the next video, array, array lists, and hash tables. Those will cover pretty much everything you will really ever create manually, probably, um, unless you start creating your own objects. And that's it for tutorial two. I am going to see you on the next video.